dears, welcome back to my corner of the internet. Today is a Wednesday, which means that I've got another book talk video for you guys. Um, the book that I'm going to be talking about today, I mentioned before, maybe in um, one of my to be read uh, videos, and that book is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. <sighs> this book is really difficult to talk about. It was painful. It was, it's a quick read. It's, it's not a long book and the, you know, the text is large. There's not a ton on the page. So you can finish this. If you have a, if you have a long afternoon to sit, you can finish it in a day. If not, definitely over the course of a couple of days. Um, first let's talk for a minute about the history that's kind of, um, surrounding this book. So as I said, it was written by a man named Patrick Ness. But it was written kind of as a project of love because the idea was originally from a writer called Siobhan Dowd. And she had kind of started this book. She had written books previously. I think there's two or three other books that she's written. Um, if that's wrong, I'll, I'll insert that info here. But she had started writing this book. And um, she didn't get much done, mostly just kind of an idea put down. And then she got breast cancer and she died. And Patrick Ness was a friend of hers. And kind of as an homage to her, he took the kind of outline that she had, the ideas that she had begun with, and he wrote the book. Um, I... <laughs> it's... It's not a happy book. It's a very a heart-wrenching book, but it's an important book. And it covers the topic of grief, which is something that's so universal. You know, how we deal with grief, that varies from person to person, but the fact that we are all going to feel it, that's just a given. So this book is about a young boy named Connor. Connor is, I think he's 14 and his mom is sick and she's been sick for a while um, and it's just been him and his mom his dad um, took off to America um, and yeah it's been him and his mom and she got sick and she's been going through many many different treatments and she'd get better for a bit and then it would get worse and a treatment would kind of show hopeful signs that it was working and then it wouldn't. Um, but they, you know, they made it work together. But then it just gets to a point where it's not working anymore and she gets put in the hospital. And shortly, shortly before that, um, at exactly 12.07 a.m. when Connor's in bed, he wakes up and the old yew tree in his backyard um, has come to life and it's this huge hulking monster that visits him. And the monster says to him, I have three stories to tell you. I'm going to tell you my story and then you're going to tell me yours. But the, old, the catch is, you have to tell me the truth. So as the monster, so if the first morning that Connor wakes up after this happens, he thinks, of course, that it was some sort of crazy dream because, you know, he wakes up, the tree's still out there. It's, you know, it's just a tree. But he finds evidence around his room of things that had happened in the dream the night before and there's you know there's physical evidence so he thinks what in God's name is going on so while these uh, dreams are happening his mom gets put in the hospital um, his grandmother comes and takes him to her house to live for a while while his mom is getting treatment and him and his mother they they don't see eye to eye they butt heads in a in a, in a very big way um, and his grandmother is kind of trying to find a way to get through to Connor because she knows 
that the time is going to come very soon when he is going to be living with her full time. Um, so the monster comes again and tells a story, the first of three. And it's about, um, and it's, it's about an evil witch who does some terrible things in the kingdom. Um, but in the end, there's always a twist to the tree stories or the monster stories in that it's never quite what you think it is. And there's no exception to this one. And then as time goes on, we realize that the monster was talking in a um, roundabout way of Connor's grandmother and was trying to kind of get him to see her in a different light. Um, and then next, what really startles Connor is his dad comes home from America and he takes this, of course, as a very alarmingly bad sign that his mom is very, very ill. And so then the monster comes again and tells him a story. Um, and that story takes the shape of Connor's father trying to give him, um, trying to give Connor a, a more adult, clearer picture of what might have happened between his parents and why things are the way they are. And this book is just so cleverly written. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, Connor's having a very, very hard time at school. He's being bullied. He's isolating himself from his friends. He's, he's just, he's so desperately in need of a reaction from somebody. He wants to be punished. He wants to be kicked out of school. He wants somebody to react to him. But they don't because poor Connor, his mom is so sick. Um, we have to, you know, excuse Connor. His mother's dying. We can't, you know, Connor can't help it. And that makes him so mad and it hurts him so much. And then we get to the point where Connor's mother calls him in because she knows that she doesn't have much time left. And he's mad. He's mad at everyone. He's mad at her. He's mad at himself for being mad at her. And he's mad at his grandmother and his father and the whole entire world, which of course is something we all go through when we're losing someone who's so incredibly close to us and whose loss we feel even before it actually happens because it's so enormous and it's so upsetting. And there's a scene where she sits him down on the bed and she tells him it's okay for him to be angry at her. And she says, you know, if down the road the time comes where you regret that you were angry with me and I knew it, she said, you know, she says, please know that it was okay. And I knew that you loved me. And, you know, there's nothing more that really needs to be said. It's just such a heartbreaking book. It's being turned into a film starring um, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson and Sigourney Weaver. And I cannot wait to see the movie because I can't wait to see how they bring this all to life. Um, yeah, uh, the final 20 or so pages of the book, I cried nonstop when it was done. I put it down on, on the bedside table and I just sat there and continued to cry because it's so, so heart-wrenching. Uh, but that being said, don't let that scare you off. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeously written, beautiful tale of loss and suffering and um, the courage that it takes to survive and move forward and it's just it's it's an important book I think and for anyone who's grieving or has recently grieved I think it could be very helpful um, I had originally bought this book for my daughter uh, for a birthday gift back in September um, but like I normally do because um, I don't know I just I think it's listed somewhere as a YA book young adult 
Um, so I read it first, as I always do, because, I, you know, if it's something that's not obviously for children, um, I like to read it first just to get a, an idea of what kind of book it is. Um, and I'm, I've actually told her to probably not read this for a little while. She's very sensitive like I am, and I just feel like this would be a little too much for her to handle um, at 12, but a few years down the road for sure. I think she'd love it. And... Yes, I would 100% recommend you check it out. It's hard to rate. It's hard to talk about. Um, because it's just, it's, it's just a beautiful story. No matter how much it hurts. And it hurts. It causes me physical pain. Um, but it was well worth it. So if you've read this, I'd love, love, love to hear your thoughts down below. Um, if not, what are you currently reading? And, um... Yeah, that's it for today, you guys. I will see you on Friday with my October favorites.